Hi and welcome to the next video in this series SQL Server on Amazon RDS. I'm John McCormack and today we're going to be talking about backups and restores for RDS. Now the great thing about all cloud hosting companies, if you are using something that is platform as a service, which is the term used to define RDS, <clears throat> then they're going to automate the backups for you. Now, RDS allows you to set your backup retention period from between 0 to 35 days and you can have point in time restores to any point during the previous 35 days potentially um, just really except from within the last five minutes okay because they use log backups for that and that means that you have a five minute RPO. Now on top of the automated backups you can also do native backups and restores to and from Amazon S3, which is the object storage. So you can have database backups sitting in S3 that you can restore to your instance, or you can back up your instance to S3. Now to do that, you need to change the option group, which is something similar to parameter groups that we covered before. And you must use an IAM role to grant permission to your S3 bucket. On top of the backups, automated and native, there are also snapshots they are kept until they're deleted by the user. They are initiated by the user, and you can use PowerShell, the CLI, API, or even the AWS console. Snapshots can be shared between accounts. And if you come from an Azure background and you know what subscriptions are, then accounts are just similar to subscriptions. You can restore a full RDS instance to a new instance from a snapshot. So here we are in the AWS console. And we can see that DemoDB is available. If we click on DemoDB and go to Configuration, have a little bit of a scroll down, we can see that the option group in play is the default SQL Server option group um, for Express Edition Major Version 14. Now, if we don't change that, we're not going to be able to do the native backups and restores. So let's go in and modify the instance and change the option group. So scrolling down in the Modify Options until we get to option groups. The one that I'm going to choose here is called Demo SQL Server EX14 and I'm going to say continue and I want it to apply immediately so let's modify that. I'll take a few minutes to modify and what we'll do is have a quick look at the option groups. I set this one up before the, the demo started and if you click on that in there you can see that it has the SQL Server Backup Restore option enabled. <clears throat> and it has the Backup Restore S3 IAM role applied to it. So the IAM role of Backup Restore S3 has permissions granted to my S3 bucket that I'm going to use for backing up and restoring. So looking at the database status again, DemoDB is modifying. We'll need to wait until it is fully modified, which can take a few minutes. So we'll come back once that's done. Okay, the instance is available again, so let's dive straight into Management Studio. Okay, so here we are in Management Studio. Now, the first thing to notice is, although you can restore and backup databases natively, it's not the normal restore database or backup database syntax. We need to use an RDS stored procedure for that. Before you start this, make sure that you have set the option group to allow SQL Server Backup Restore option. Make sure you've set an IAM role that has permissions to your S3 bucket and make sure that the bucket is in the same region because if it's in a different region this won't work. Now we're not going to run this command but if we wanted to compress the backups then we run the RDS set configuration stored procedure pass in those parameters and that will enable compression. We are on Express Edition so it's not going to work with that. So if we cast our mind back to previous demo we had the demo2 database, which is pretty empty to be honest. Um, so it should be quite quick to back that up. We're using the RDS backup database command here. So if we run that through, then that's going to create the backup for you. So you're passing in the name of the database. You're passing in the ARN of your S3 bucket and including the backup name that you want to use. So I'm just calling it demo2full.back. And we're allowing 
as to overwrite the backup file that is already there. So let's see how that's getting on. If we put in the task ID of 14, we can see that it's in progress at the moment. That won't take too much longer to finish, it's pretty quick. Okay, so the backup is complete. Let's go in and see if it's in the S3 bucket. Okay, so I'm looking at the S3 in the AWS console at the moment. I'm going to click on Demo2, which was the folder I created. Uh, nothing there at the moment. Let's just refresh that. And there we go. Okay, so that was just a, a cached error there. So the backup was there, written at 744, and it's 2.9 megabytes. That's going to stay for as long as you want it. You could overwrite that daily. You could use timestamps. Another thing that we're not going to cover is you could set up lifecycle rules to either archive into cheaper storage or delete older backups. So we can stripe backups as well, which means that you're writing them to multiple files, which can speed up larger backups and restores. I'm going to back up the Nebula database here, and I'm going to back it up across three files. The syntax to notice here is instead of giving it a name, like we did before demo2-full, I'm calling this nebula-full-star. So the star will have a number appended to it for each of the files that are created. So let's run that in, and that's task 15. So let's um, check the status of that one. It won't be ready yet because it's brand new, but if there is an issue, then it, it will tend to fail quite quickly. So the task has been started. I'm going to give that a minute and come back once it's done. Okay, so that's completed now, but you may notice that the task ID has changed to 20. That's because I made a few mistakes um, just through having the wrong path. So if we look at 20, it succeeded. It took about a minute and a half to restore that database. And if we refresh things here, we should see the database show up in the list. And it does, AdventureWorks LT 2017. So that's us, we've restored the database, we've taken a couple of backups, we've used S3. There's a lot more to talk about, I'm trying to keep these fairly brief. So you can also do differential backups and log backups. You can encrypt your backups with KMS keys. You can use S3 lifecycle rules, as I mentioned, to move out old data so that it's not sitting there um, costing you money and uh, just being less secure overall. I've added a few other links in here, so if you download the T-SQL uh, from the link on the web page, then you'll get all the links and you'll get all the T-SQL and you can try the demos out yourself. So have fun and I'll see you in the next video.